Okay, so we've got the theory now of that particular loci, the perpendicular bisector one. We're now going to try and do it with some quite simple examples that we've got. So this first one says, sketch the locus of points represented by the modulus of z equals the modulus of z minus 6i. Write its equation. Okay, this one is definitely going to be easier to find the equation after we've done the sketch. So I'm going to begin by drawing um, the axes that we're going to have here. And remember, our normal form is z minus z1 equals z minus z2 modulus of both sides. So it's pretty obvious that the two complex numbers that we're talking about in this case, the z1 is going to be at 0 and the z2 is going to be at 6i. So z1 is going to be at 0 and 6i will be somewhere up here. So we've got our 0 and we have 6i. So we're just going to have now the perpendicular bisector of the line that joins them together, which means pretty simply it is just going to be a horizontal line going across like this, and it's going to be crossing here at 3i. So we've drawn a sketch of it, and we're now going to try and write down what its equation is. So we've got to be careful about how we might write this equation. Um, because normally we would just say that um, if this was a Cartesian equation, we would say something like y equals 3. But we're obviously doing complex numbers here. So what we can say with complex numbers is just z equals x plus 3i. The reason I've written it like this is because it can have any real part and it just will have an imaginary part of 3i. You could have, I don't know, 3 and 3i or 5 and 3i, and it would always fall on that line that you've got there. So this is its Cartesian equation, and this is the, uh, the complex number that actually satisfies it. So let's see if we can come up with the Cartesian equation from the definition of the modulus. Um, from the graph properties of the sketch, we've kind of already done that one, but we'll have a think about that and, and just get that written down at the bottom too. So we're going to do a slightly longer method here from the definition of the modulus. I don't really like this method that much, but it's still worth having a look at. So we're going to let z equal x plus iy, which means that the modulus of z being equal to the modulus of z minus 6i, that is going to be, let's see if we can go a little bit quicker with this, it's going to be the square root of x squared plus y squared equals the square root of, well, the x part is going to be just x squared. And because we're going to have the y minus 6i, it would be a plus y minus 6 squared. We can square both sides, so we get x squared plus y squared equals x squared plus, and I'm going to expand these brackets. That's y squared minus 12y plus 36. What you then notice is you can subtract x squared from both sides. You can subtract y squared from both sides. And I'm going to add that 12y to the other side. So I get 12y equals 36. And I'm going to divide by 12 so that I get y equals 3, which was the Cartesian equation that we've got here. Method two, we've kind of already done. Just by having a look at the sketch of the graph, we can clearly see that it's a horizontal line that would always have a y coordinate three. So we can just go straight in and just say that y is equal to three. So the, this is our Cartesian. This is a complex number that would satisfy this particular property that we've got here. OK, let's try some that are not going to be horizontal lines, some that are perhaps a little bit trickier. So it says here, find the Cartesian equation of the locus of z if z minus 3 equals z plus i and sketch the locus of z on an argand diagram. So I'm going to do the first one without doing the sketch. Really what I would recommend is doing the sketch and probably going with method 2, but I want to show you that method 1 is going to work here. So first of all, we're going to let z equal x plus i y. And then that's obviously going to show that z minus 3 would be x minus 3, collecting the real parts together, plus i, y. And then z plus i would be x plus y plus 1, i. Hopefully you can spot how you can go pretty quickly to these versions that we've got here. So the modulus of z minus 3 being equal to the modulus of z plus i, I'm actually just going to find the modulus of this and the modulus of this. So it's going to be the square root of x minus 3 squared plus y squared the square root of x squared plus y plus 1 squared. Now, you didn't have to write those square root signs because we knew that they were going to cancel on both sides. I'm going to go ahead and expand the brackets. So I get x squared minus 6x plus 9 plus y squared equals x squared plus y squared plus 2y plus 1. And again, 
the x squareds will cancel and the y squareds will cancel, which is expected because we're coming up with the equation here of a straight line. So we don't really want to see any squared terms, do we? We want it just to be x and y terms. So let's uh, collect some things together. I'm going to, actually, I don't know if I need to collect that much together. I'm just going to write minus 6x. Let's go back to blue. Let's subtract the 1 from both sides. So minus 6x plus 8 is equal to 2y. And then I'm just going to divide everything by 2. So y is equal to minus 3x plus 4 that we've got for the Cartesian equation of that line. OK, we're now going to do the second method, which is from the properties, uh, graph properties of a sketch. So the two numbers that it's going to be in between is going to be i, which is just basically 1i. So you can either think of it as an i or you can think of it as a 1i. And then 3 over here. Oops, I've done that wrong. It's not going to be i, is it? Because it's z minus z2. So actually z2 in this case is actually minus i. So here it is down at minus i or minus 1i, and here it is over at 3. I'm going to connect them together, and we know that the perpendicular bisector of this will be the locus. Okay. Now this kind of works. We can see that it's going to have a negative gradient. That makes sense. And it's got a positive y-intercept, and that makes sense as well. But we're going to try and do it from the graph properties of the sketch. So what I'm going to do... Let's think about these as coordinates now. So I'm not going to call it um, minus i uh, minus one i because I've got y and x. I'm going to call it three and minus one. So perpendicular bisector. We need to know two things. We need to know its gradient and we need to know the midpoint. So I'm going to start off by finding the gradient of the blue line. So the gradient of the blue line. It's pretty easy to see this one. It is going to be the change in y which is just 1, and the change in x, which is 3. So it's just 1 divided by 3, which means that the gradient of the perpendicular is going to be minus 3. You obviously could find the gradient if they weren't such simple coordinates. You could use your methods from chapter 5 in pure year 1. So we've already got the gradient is minus 3. Now we're going to think about what the midpoint is. So if I just call this point here, if I call that M, we know that the capital M midpoint Seeing as we've got this coordinate here is 0, minus 1, and this one is 3, 0. Pretty obviously, the midpoint is going to be 3 over 2 and minus a half. So we want the equation of a line that has the gradient of minus 3 and goes through this point here. So we're going to do our equation y minus y1, which is this. So that's y plus a half equals m brackets x minus x1, which is this. So you get y plus a half equals minus 3x plus 9 over 2. Subtract that half and you get 8 over 2, which is 4. So we end up with exactly the same um, definition of the exact same equation of the Cartesian line. It then says here, what if we also required that the real part of z was equal to zero? Well, as a quick reminder, this is what z is. So we want the real part of z to be zero. We can do this from the equation and we can also do it from the graph. If the real part of z is zero, then x is zero, meaning that y would just be equal to four because I've taken zero and I've subbed it in here. Graphically, what this means is that if x is 0, if the real part is 0, the imaginary part is going to be where it crosses the axis here, which we can see is going to be plus 4. It's like the y-intercept. So if the real part of z is equal to 0, then our complex number that would satisfy this equation, which would solve this equation, would be that z is equal to 4i. You could actually put all of that in your, um, you could work out all of those things and you should find out that it will um, satisfy both sides of this equation. Okay, we're going to do some problem solving questions on the next video, um, but it should be quite straightforward, I think. This is slightly easier than the circles one.